tonight, I uh, just want to spend a few moments and, uh, you know, every time you're heading into a new year, but I think this, is, this year is not just a, a new number, like a 2016, it's just different. I believe we're headed into a different realm. We've been headed into a different realm for quite some time, and I believe it's getting ready to come to a head. It could be this year, I don't know, but everything's looking like it, you know. I mean, things are really uh, in turmoil all over the world, you know, and, and I believe... Uh, you know, only God knows, of course, but I believe that uh, things are coming to a head so quick and th- something's going to happen, amen? And I believe this, I believe the church of Jesus Christ, as you and me, uh, we can't uh, play the church games like we have in the past. I mean, it's time, uh, I mean, we don't play games here, but I mean, even us, I mean, uh, I was going to use this message on a Sunday, but I decided I couldn't wait till a Sunday, amen, when, so people can watch it and get the DVD. But the, the, the truth is, amen, that uh, things are rapidly coming to a, to a head, amen, and we have to really be different than we've been. I mean, we maybe we've been on fire, but that fire is not enough. I'm telling you, amen, the fire is not enough because we listen, and we've done different things, and we do a lot of different things, amen, but you know what? We have to be ready to do more than we've done, amen, to reach this world, to reach our world just around here. We can't worry about New York, and we can't worry about you know, South America, we need to be concerned about Riverview and Gibsonton and Progress Village, amen. That's our harvest field, and that's the field that we've got to work on, amen. And so I, I just believe that, amen. And so tonight what I wanted to share with you is something about that I've titled Returning to Our Foundations or Refreshing Our Foundations, amen. You know, this church was started in revival. That's why it's called Lighthouse Revival Center, amen. It is, you know, we, we always have services in the chapel, and then one day, during those revival times, the Lord spoke to me and said, uh, uh, you need to establish a church. I mean, we always kind of have been a church, but really establish a church and call it Lighthouse Revival Center. So I talked to Apostle Louie about it, and he's the one that came and told me, yeah, you're supposed to do the da 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 long story. And then we made a sign, and remember that little sign we stuck out in front of the chapel and said, Lighthouse Revival Center, all welcome. Amen. And it was just me, Allison, you and Diane, and maybe Maria, that's about it, and the brothers, amen. It was hot, though, and then Tom came along. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I, I, my, my hearing, my left ear is, is not as good as it used to be from being under that mic. <laughs> that speaker, I mean, amen. But anyway, this place started in revival, amen, the Lighthouse Revival Center, amen. And uh, we need to understand that we need to get back to where revival really is, amen. And it's a hunger, a thirst, a passion a desire for more of God, amen, and to see other people come into the kingdom and have that passion and desire also, amen. But with that, let me take you back just a little bit here, amen. We talk, we're talking about foundations. See, I believe in America we've lost our foundation. And I believe that as the church goes, so goes America, amen, because we were founded as a Christian nation no matter what the president says or anybody else says, amen. Listen to me. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you straight up. Amen. We were founded as a Christian nation. We were founded as a Buddhist nation, a Muslim nation. We were founded as a Christian nation. Amen. And the Constitution and all these things come right out of, listen, the believing. Amen. Believing in God. Amen. And so, but what's happened, we've drifted away from that foundation. And the way it started, and real simple, you can look, you can go back to the 50s. It was in the 50s when the Congress passed a law or passed it and made our model in God we trust. It's not that long ago. It was the 50s. Can you imagine trying to get through that through Congress today? It'll never happen. See, because what's happened, we've become haters of God. Not we, but America, part of the leadership, amen, and people in power have become haters of God. If you remember the Democratic Convention that was held here in Tampa, when they mentioned God, everybody in the convention just about booed the person that talked about God. Imagine that. Imagine that. A political party that would the majority of people booed when they talked about God. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't make the Republicans any better, you know, because but but you don't understand what I'm trying to say, amen. So what happened though, we see that in the 60s things started to change. We see where we are today. The foundation really of our society is the family. And that foundation has been destroyed. It's been destroyed. And you can really go back and you can see. Back in the 60s, amen, when the foundation started to get destroyed, when, listen, when we rebelled against God, took God out of the schools, amen, all these things were taken out. And and because of that, as we move along, 
we see that the foundation that keeps being destroyed, the family's been destroyed. And guess what? The church has been complicit. Amen? As part of that. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we don't teach today and preach today about the sanctity of marriage and church. We don't talk about commitment and responsibility in marriage. Amen? People run to throw in the towel at anything. And I'll tell you, the Bible is clear. There's only one place, amen, for divorce. And you know that's because of what? Fornication and one, amen? Because you're supposed to hold this thing together. But see, so we've lost, we've lost, listen, we've lost the foundations, amen? Let me take you now to some foundations. Go to Matthew chapter 25, and I'm going to take you to foundations of the Lighthouse Gospel Mission, amen? Matthew chapter 25. When Jay Leonard received the call of God to start this ministry, amen? This was the word of the scriptures that God gave him. This is our foundation. And as I read it, we need to ask ourselves, amen, those that are here today and those that are watching and those that will hear it, members of the church, you need to ask yourself, is this still our foundation? And let's just go to uh, Matthew 25, 35. It says, For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me, I was sick and you visited me, I was in prison and you came unto me. Then he says in verse 40, as much as you have done it unto one of these, the least of my brethren, you have done it unto me. This is Jesus speaking, amen. So this is the foundation of this ministry. We still do this, amen, but I'm challenging this whole church, amen. We really need to pick up and we just need to start doing evangelism again. You know, we've, we've, we've let people just fade away in evangelism and it's time, amen, listen. If we really believe that Jesus is Lord and we really believe in the power of God, we really believe in the power of the blood, we believe in the, in the power of healing, we believe in the power of restoration, then we need to, listen, take this outside here. We come, we get taught, we get a lot of good teaching here, but we need to take it outside, amen, and it's not just to grow a church. Listen, it's because in these last days, listen, it's what we have to do. So the question is, do we still do this foundational work? To a little extent, but not the way it should be. Not the way it should be. Not the way it should be. Amen. Now, go to Acts chapter 26. The other foundational scripture for this ministry was the one that the Lord, the uh, Holy Spirit, gave me one uh, early Sunday morning, years and years ago. Amen. Acts 26, verse 18. The call that we have. The church is supposed to have is this. Verse 18, it says, To open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light. Listen, we need to understand that this is our mission. This is our call. Amen. Listen, it's to open the eyes of those that are lost. Amen. And turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God. We need to listen. We need to understand that. Our goal is to open, the, listen, open the eyes of people and turn them, listen, to the power of God from the power of the devil. Amen? Listen. And that they may receive what? Forgiveness of sin. Somebody say forgiveness. That's a key. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith in me. See, folks, listen. That foundational scripture that the Holy Spirit gave me one morning, amen, and study, I said, that's to add to it, Matthew 25. We have to open the eyes of folks, amen. That's what we do here, by the way, through the faith home, amen. Hallelujah. But listen, and it says that we may, what, receive forgiveness of sin. See, a lot of us say we're forgiven, but you don't really believe it. The whole world says they think they're forgiven, and I can tell that you don't really believe it the way we act. Come on. But then it says so we can receive an inheritance. I mean, oh, God wants you to have an inheritance of, listen, from God, a blessing, the blessing of God, but you'll never believe that you can be blessed if you can't believe that you can be forgiven. Amen? Hallelujah. The other foundational scripture, Psalm 63, 8. My soul followeth hard after thee. Ladies and gentlemen, that scripture, listen, it, it's, it's, it's on our bulletins, it's on everything, and it's like this. That you have to get to the point that my soul, my very being, every part of me is running hard after God. And, of course, God ain't running from you. 
means you're running through everything that could distract you. You're running through everything that could deter you, amen, from going after God. You're, you're running through it all, amen. Hallelujah. So those are some foundational scriptures. Now, go to Proverbs chapter 10. I'm teaching tonight, not preaching, so I got a lot of scripture. I, I think, you know, things can change, amen. But I'm talking about returning or refreshing our foundations, amen. This ministry needs to come, come back to the place, amen, and refresh ourselves in revival. We need a revival in the church. I'm not talking about outside or anything else. I'm talking about right here at the LRC. Folks that aren't here and you're listening to, you're going to listen to this, I'm going to give you the CD. Amen. We need to get on fire for God. We don't need to have church as usual. You know, we're going to get to the point where we're not going to try to get to church as late as we can. We're going to try to get to church as early as we can. See, that's endemic. That's endemic, and it really shows you where you're at. When you, fall, when you roll in on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock to a 10 o'clock service, you know what you're doing? You're playing religion. Time to catch fire. Then you wonder why things don't change in your life, things don't change around you, and you complain about the world. Listen, if you just start to catch fire yourself, maybe things will change. See, but the, I don't know about it. Probably the other churches are the same because I've been to other churches and they got the same problem. Everybody rolling in. You know, they got the, they got the, you know, the 10.30 crowd, the 11 o'clock crowd, the 11.15 crowd. Amen. We even have 12 o'clock crowd come in here. When we're getting ready to say, you know, it's like the benediction. We don't do that. Amen. It's like you try to get the church as late as possible because you don't really like to praise God and worship. Well, maybe they don't. I don't know. Because there, there's a lot of things, amen, in this foundational stuff, amen, that people really people really pick up and quit jobs, leave jobs, and do anything at any time anyway because people don't have responsibility. People, oh, come on. Foundation. Think about these words. People don't like them. Responsibility. Commitment. Morality. Repentance. Man, these are our words. See, church don't want that today. I mean, they want to roll in, amen. Hallelujah. But come on. Be a Proverbs chapter 10, verse 25. As a whirlwind passes, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. Hallelujah. You and I today, listen, are righteous not because of works, but because of faith in Jesus Christ. How many know I can't increase my righteousness? I'm as righteous now as I'll ever be. The day I accepted Jesus Christ, I was as righteous as I would ever be. So I don't have to work this thing up. Amen. It's a gift. But the thing is, we don't understand it. And that's why you come to church. That's why you take uh, Bible lessons, because we really don't understand some of those things. I mean, you know, when I got born again, you could tell me you're righteous. I would have no idea what you meant. That's why, let me jump ahead of myself. That's why sometimes, you know, uh, in the church and as teachers and preachers, we've got to be cognizant of who we're preaching and teaching to because sometimes, listen, if you don't get foundational stuff and you try to come out with, these, with revelations, it'll, it'll kill people. For example, just an example, amen. Let's say, just, just let's say, you believe in one saved, always saved. Let's just say you believe that. And somebody's struggling, like in the faith or whatever, with their life, and you come out and you, hey, one son, and, and they get it the wrong way, it'll kill them. It'll kill them, if that's what you really believe. It'll kill them because they'll get it the wrong way the message and say, well, I'm, I'm saved for Jesus, I'm saved forever, I'm okay. So I do whatever, amen, I'll be all right. You know, that's that, that other grace thing, amen. Hallelujah. But see, we need to return to foundational stuff. Go to Matthew chapter 7. Forgive me if I moved around a little bit. I didn't have this all lined out how I was going to go. But Matthew chapter 7.
I believe the whole word of God. I believe in uh, the power of God. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in baptism of the Holy Spirit. I believe in miracles, amen. I believe in the prophetic word. I believe in the word of faith, amen. You know, I believe these things, amen. I believe all these things. Amen. I believe them all. But I also believe that Jesus came to give us a standard. He came to show us the way to live. Amen. In Matthew uh, chapter 7, let's go to verse 24. Jesus speaking. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, <coughs> I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. In other words, it had a what? Solid foundation. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man <coughs> which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the wind blew and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Somebody say foundation. foundation. See, we need to get back if we've left them, or maybe we need to refresh some of the foundational things here. And one of these things right here is look at what it says in verse 24. Jesus says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I like them to a wise man who built his house upon a rock, a solid foundation. When you see that, you have to wonder, what sins is he talking about? Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, what are his sayings? Well, I don't know about you. If you've never done it, <coughs> you've got to go back and say, well, what's he talking about? He said that if you do these things that he's saying right here, if you do them, <coughs> if you do them, he says you're going to be wise. You're going to have a solid foundation. That means when the storms of life come. That means even like today, amen, when things seem like they're totally out of control everywhere, if you've got that solid foundation, amen, yes, the storm will blow, but it's not going to blow you away. In fact, you'll be so set, amen, that you'll be a light. You'll be the salt. You'll be the light for those that need you, amen. But if you built yourself on the sand, listen, you're going to be no good to nobody. So we've got to find out, say, what sayings does he say that we have to do? Well, we don't have time for that tonight. But all you got to do is start reading Matthew chapter 4, 5, 6, and 7 and see what he was saying. Well, let's just look at one or two things, amen? If you don't have time for it at all, but you can read that. Go to Matthew chapter uh, 4. Today, listen, you know I'm, you know I'm a grace man, you know, because I preach some big messages on grace, but it's like, you got to be sure that you have the right understanding, just like rightly dividing the word of truth. Because if you don't, amen, you'll build a sandy foundation <laughs> instead of a solid foundation. And grace is meant to build a solid foundation, amen. But look at this, Jesus, tempted in the, in the, in the, in the wilderness, comes out, you know, anointed of the Holy Ghost. And what's the first thing he does? Verse 17, when he comes out, amen, the first thing he preaches. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, oh, my God, the R word. Repent, for in the kingdom of heaven is at hand. See, today, I don't know about you, but I, you know, I follow churches and not just our, but I follow things. And, and it's almost like people don't want to hear that word no more. Preachers don't want to even speak it because it might offend somebody. I was looking at it this way. I used to have a message I preached years ago back in the 90s that you can love somebody all the way to hell. You can love them all the way to hell. What do you mean? What do I mean? You never tell them, amen, what they need to hear. Oh, you're okay. I'm okay. You're okay. It's all right. You know, God loves you. How many know, do you, I believe some people went to hell thinking God loved them. And he really does. But they not under, they don't you're lacking the understanding, amen. So remember this, amen. What I'm talking about tonight is 
returning to foundations, and repentance is the foundation of the body of Christ, the foundation of a believer, foundation of the church. How did I get I had to repent, not God, hallelujah. You know, I got saved by believing on Jesus Christ. But after that, I had to start doing some repenting in order to get free and stay set free, amen. In fact, I still got to do repent. I mean, I'm not doing drugs and that anymore, but I still got to repent sometimes about my thinking, about how I feel about somebody. I may not say it, it may not even look like it. Inside you're boiling and you got to repent of how you feel. Amen. So repent means nothing more than change your mind, change your way of thinking, change your course, turn around and go another way. I think that's a grace message. Amen. How many know Jesus is grace? So grace came to earth, and grace gave us some instructions on how to live. Grace gave us instructions on how to live. Not how to slip by, but how to really live. Amen? <laughs> slip and slide. You know, I, I was telling, uh, I guess I was talking to you, Tom. Was it you? I don't know if it was uh, the Tom bit. I was reading, uh, I don't know if it was Charisma email or something. I, was, I read a lot of different things. Talking about a Southern Baptist church that was getting ready to ordain a transvestite. And of course, the Southern Baptist Convention, shh, they're going to come on you and come and get them. Right? But think about that. Where would you even do something like that? I mean, why would you even think that? If you already have a perverted, your mind is, listen, it's gone. Amen. See, you can't be following the Lord and do crazy stuff like that. You can't be living the foundation of holiness and righteousness and, and, and do stuff like that. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5 of Matthew. You know, I've listened to a lot of different, read a lot of different books and, and listen to a lot of different folks. And I hear people come out and say the Sermon on the Mount doesn't apply to us anymore. It don't apply to us no more. Oh, really? Jesus spent his time talking about this. You know, bless, 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 bless. Amen. Hallelujah. So it doesn't apply no more. See, if you follow this, this is grace talking to us, telling us how to really live. And this is what we need to tell the folks. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at the... You know, you know, it's like uh, there are people who say the Ten Commandments don't apply no more. Well, I'm here to tell you they really do. Amen. Well, Jesus did away with that. No, he didn't. Look at the, in Matthew chapter 5, look at verse 17. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy but to fulfill the law and the prophets. What does that mean? It means Jesus came to fulfill, listen, the sacrificial parts of the law. Amen. That we had to, that every year we had to repent of sin. In other words, we never got rid of it. Every year you had to make sacrifices to God for what you did last year and for the year before. In other words, there was never an end, amen, to your requirement to repent and give sacrifice for the same sin over and over again. So what did Jesus do? He fulfilled the law, listen, of sacrifice. He fulfilled it. I don't have to go kill no goats. I don't have to kill no sheep, amen. I don't have to beat myself like this all day long, amen. I don't have to whip myself with a whip or anything else. He fulfilled that, amen. He took all my sin and your sin and all the punishment and all the sacrifice, and he is and is still today the final sacrifice. So he has fulfilled the law for me and you that we don't have to do those things no more. Amen? But, verse 18, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one jot or one title shall no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Verse 19, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments shall teach and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, 
the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. How will we be called great in the kingdom of heaven? So I'm teaching you. Amen. Think about this a minute. The Ten Commandments. I have heard so much disparity in the Ten Commandments. Say, I don't understand no more. Really? So then you can go kill? You can go steal? You can go commit adultery? You can lie and cheat? Ten Commandments, right? So is that okay? It's been done away with? It hasn't been done away with. Oh, we're only subject to two laws. Okay, what are they? Well, one of them, one of the set is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and the other is love, your neighbor, love the others as you love yourself. And then the other set is, you know, there's two sets, right? Then the other one is thou shalt love the Lord thy God with your mind, your whole body, your strength, and everything you got, right? And love your neighbor as yourself. And it said these two laws fulfill all the law. And it's true, they do. They fulfill the tent. They fulfill everything. However, if I teach you that there's only two laws, and you're fresh, you don't know anything, and I teach you, man, all you got to do is believe in Jesus and love one another. Woo! I'm free, I'm free, I'm free indeed. I do nothing, that's it. Well, the truth is, even the Bible says, even the devil believes on Jesus. So come on. And love one another. Try to love one another without understanding, have an understanding of the commandments of God. Try to love one another without understanding who God is and God is love. Try to love somebody. Come on now. See, that's what I'm talking about. You know, you'll never do the two if you don't never understand the ten. You'll never do the two if you don't understand the ten. Because the ten have all to do with loving God and loving one another. They do. So if you don't get that and you never taught that, then you'll never get the two. They won't mean anything to you. Amen? Hallelujah. So what I'm here to tell you today, I believe in the grace of God. I'm a grace preacher, but listen, this still applies. And, I, and look at what Jesus said. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. So I'll come here and teach you. You don't have to worry about this no more. Oh, my God. He shall be called the least. Well, I don't want to be the least. Amen? See, I'm talking tonight about returning to some foundational stuff. And this is foundational stuff. With this foundational stuff, then you can move into, into uh, revelations, prophetic revelations. I may know that you can go ahead, you know, oh, I got a prophetic word, and you don't have no idea about Matthew chapter 5. Well, the Holy Spirit speaks to me. Well, yeah, you know, but you, remember, you might not know who the Holy Spirit is. I'm going to tell you something tonight that's going to upset some folks. But I'm going to tell you this straight up. Grace will point the finger at you. I know Grace pointed the finger at me. His name was Apostle Lewis Captain Billy. I mean, he's, everybody that sees Apostle is love, love, love. But let me tell you what, after, after he got to love me for a while, it was time to point the finger. <laughs> Come on. Amen. So what was happening, Grace wasn't working very well for me. So I didn't have an understanding, so he had to finally, you're not called to do this no more. Hallelujah. But anyway, hallelujah. So Jesus fulfilled all the work that you and I have to do to get saved, all the work you and I have to do, amen, listen, to be free of sin. He did it for us. Now, all we need to do is believe and receive. Amen. But we also have to do one thing. I've also heard this taught, amen, that 1 John uh, 1, 9 is not for the believer anymore. That you don't need to, you know, you need to confess your sins, amen, to Jesus. You know, he's faithful and just to cleanse you of all unrighteousness and all that. You know that scripture, right? 1 John 1, 9. And I've heard it taught, amen, that that's not for us. The same way that this is taught, so remember the teaching is this, that the way you get saved is by believing on Jesus Christ, not confessing your sin. And that's the grace message, and I believe that. So then if, so then if that's true, that the way you get saved is by confessing Jesus as Lord, then why would it say 
you have to, com to confess your sin. That's, that's for you and me. And confess only means to agree with God. God, I agree with you that I did this in this law. You know, it's another thing. Now, I'm not talking, listen, we don't have to take, don't take people with condemnation, but you know what? If you've done something bad, is you know what? Good if you feel bad. Good. You ought to feel bad. You ought to feel real bad. But see, what we do today, want to make everybody feel good, and feeling good ain't going to get you nowhere. I'm not talking about condemnation, condemning sin, but I don't know about you, when I've sinned in my past, I felt bad. And if you start feeling bad, you're in trouble. And if a preacher tells you, that's all right, you don't have to feel bad about it. No, 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 no. no Pastor Louis never told me that I didn't have to feel bad. He told me not to condemn myself, but to change. Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. So if you feel bad because you've done something, you sinned, good. That means there's still hope for you. Because if you don't feel that way, you're going to be hard-hearted and you're going to continue. And my God, and who knows what you're going to do after that. Lord Jesus, come on. But now today, see, that's what I'm talking about, return to the foundation. Because I see this teaching on, on TV, on the Internet. From, you know that this, no. You need to feel bad if you've done something bad. You need to be afraid. You start not feeling bad no more. Hallelujah. Well, anyway, let me move on. Chapter 5, right? There's a whole a litany of stuff over here. All you got to look at it in verse 21 where Jesus says, You have heard it. You have heard that it was said. And then he says, But I say unto you, Jesus kicked it up a notch in the Sermon on the Mount. You remember that? He kicked it up a notch. He, grace was teaching us how to live. Amen. How to live right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go with me. Let's see. Let me skip over some things. Mark chapter 10. Now, Mark chapter 10, we're going to look at this. Those of you who have been in the Word, you know the familiar story of, uh, uh, we call him the uh, rich young ruler. Right? And in Matthew chapter 10, uh, we go to verse 17, it says, And when he was gone forth, Jesus, unto the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I might inherit eternal life? He wanted to know, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? Then Jesus said unto him, he took a sidebar and said, Why you callest thou me good? There's none good but, but one, that is God. Then look, the next thing Jesus tells him, Thou knowest, the commandment. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witnesses. Defraud not. Honor thy father and thy mother. Notice the first thing when Jesus, when the guy tells him, what do I got to do to have eternal life? First he says, wait a minute. God's the one that's good. What does he tell him next? You kept the commandments. I don't know if you ever really noticed that. I mean, you, I know you've noticed it, but do you ever give it that emphasis that that's what Jesus says next? He says, you know the commandments? He's, and he listens. That doesn't sound to me like Jesus did away with it. It don't sound to me like Jesus did away with don't kill, steal, etc. Amen. But now we know what the man, the young ruler does. He comes, he says, he answers, he said, oh, ha, master. All these I observe from my youth. Done good. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing. Everybody say one thing. One thing thou lackest. Go thy, well, sell, sell, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up your cross, and follow me. 
So the question first answered, how am I going to inherit eternal life? He says, uh, you know the commandments? Oh, yeah, I know, I'm doing them. Okay, good. Now the second one is, even things that aren't sin or unlawful, amen, or even things that are lawful, let me put it that way, things that are not sin or even lawful can hinder you. You need to get rid of some stuff that's taking priority in your life and make me first. Get rid of it. You've kept the commandments, and that's good. But one thing you're lacking is passionate relationship with this church today. One thing you're lacking is a hunger and a thirst for the Lord. Amen? I don't sin. Praise be to God. But your lackluster and lukewarm in your worship of God and, in your, and even in your, do you even, even pick up the Bible? Oh, come on. Do you even pick up the Bible? Mm. Well, I got it on my iPhone. Truth is, you walk around the church and look at some iPhones and they're on face, Facebook, Instagram, and all the other gram stuff, amen? While the word being ministered. And ain't just kids. I told Wes, I said, in the youth group, I said, everybody, get, they got to get, they got to get Bibles. Get Bibles, turn some pages, amen? Foundational stuff. Forget the electronics. It'll lead you somewhere else usually. Hallelujah. Somebody say one thing. The most important thing, the needful thing, is what? Our relationship with the Lord. That's what we need to revive again, relationship with the Lord. How many, I wonder how many here have even picked up their Bible and read a whole chapter since the new year began. Well, you know, I did because I had to prepare a message. <laughs> Preachers, we've got to watch ourselves. A lot of times we're always reading the Bible for a message. I've done that and catch myself. You know, I need the Bible. I need It's good for me, but I need to go where God's got for me too, amen, not just to then give out, amen. That happens to us, and so sometimes we need to repent. I've had to repent of just studying the Word to minister. I'm, gonna be, I'm being transparent with you. I had to repent and say, God, I, what I'm doing is studying to prepare a message. Instead of what I used to do, just got to revive that again. I used to read Proverbs, one proverb every day. Amen. How many of there's 31 Proverbs? No, 30 Proverbs. 30, right? 31, amen. So one month, you only, you know, you got to double up. Hallelujah. By the way, that's the, the book of wisdom in the Old Testament. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So anyway, folks, listen. We got to get back to foundational stuff. That Jesus is number one. Amen. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God then everything else is taken care of. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say standards. Amen. Somebody commitment. Morality. Morality. Responsibility. Responsibility. These are things of the past. We've got to revive them in the church today and for our personal lives. Amen? Hallelujah. I, I Listen, I've been at this uh, going on 25 years, and I see... Always, amen, the lack of commitment and responsibility sinks people. Amen. And, but if you really had an understanding of grace and the word of God, you would, understand, you would really understand commitment and responsibility and standards. Standards. How many know the Bible is a book of standards? How many know Jesus, who is grace itself, came to give us some standards? Amen. Go to 2 Corinthians, chapter 6. I remember I used to minister at a church, did a lot of meetings at this church, and uh, I felt bad for the pastor, good man. We get ready to do a meeting, and he said, well, we do it, always do an evening meetings. He says, well, the, uh, the 730 crowd will be here soon, start at 7. And then he'd say, uh, the 745 crowd will be here soon. And I used to go, man. And 
then I started pastoring the church, a church, and I found out, man, I got the same problem. And this pastor loved the Lord, loves revival. In fact, we did, what, three and a half weeks every night before I had the church. Every night. Remember that? Were you with us? 